Uh, let's start the second session of uh, short talks. Uh, so I'll try to give a brief introduction to all of the papers that we'll see, but uh, as you see that uh, the title says, the, so there is coarse grain complexity and there is fine grain complexity. Uh, I would define myself more of a coarse grain complexity, but anyway. Uh, so in this session, we'll see uh, four talks uh, by Nofar, Marvin, Michal, and Bartek. Uh, so the first uh, talk will be about uh, complexity of answering union of constructive queries. And when I looked at this paper, it immediately uh, it looked similar to me to the following very uh, nice problem. So is composition harder than uh, just computing everything? Uh, so, so what is the problem? So suppose we have k functions, g1 to gk, from some domain x to y. And we have another function f that takes k inputs from y and outputs something from z. And we can define the uh, composition of f and g. So how would you compute the composition? Well, clearly, if you can compute easily each one of g1 to gk and also f, then clearly you can also compute the composition. Uh, but say one of the gi's is hard then sometimes uh, the composition may be also hard, but sometimes it remains e uh, easy. And this is kind of the question that I guess will be discussed in the first talk. Uh, it, of course, we're going to be more specific than this abstract, abstract setting. Uh, there, GIs will be some uh, queries to a database, and F will be some very simple function, will be some DNF, and we'll see some examples in which despite one of the GIs being hard, the composition is easy to compute. Uh, okay, the second paper. Uh, so I'm not bother reading the title, but roughly speaking, this is about the, the following kind of questions. Uh, so we all, I guess, have seen dichotomy theorems at one point in our lives. Uh, this theorem says the following thing. So we have some ge very general class of problems, calligraphic C, and usually it is defined by some structure. And we want to know, as a function of this structure, when is the problem feasible and when is it not. And when you talk about coarse grain complexity, you're talking about P versus NP hard, uh, but today we're in fine grain complexity, so we'll talk about more refined running times. And perhaps the best example is uh, constraint satisfaction problems. Uh, so there we have some predicate P from uh, K bits to one bit. So here are two examples. So there is the very well-known three sat predicate and the three ring predicate. And so this is the structure that defines uh, the class of problems. And what is the problem? Well, we have a bunch of variables and we have a bunch of constraints of the form P when applied to some set of literals must be equal to one. And the goal is to determine whether is, there is a Boolean assignment to the variable that solves all of these constraints simultaneously. Uh, so in this specific example, this is a very well known dichotomy conjecture, or more precisely dichotomy theorem. Uh, that ask for what predicate P is this problem NP hard and we, for which problems it is solvable in polytime. But you can hope for more. So when this problem is feasible, you can ask like what is the exponent in the polynomial that you can uh, solve your problem in as a function of the predicate P. So our second talk will be about something in this flavor. Uh, well, the third talk, so the third talk is of different nature. Uh, so we have a finite com grain complexity and by now there are several connections with other areas in computation. Uh, so there is connection with PCPs and distributed PCPs. Uh, and actually I'll do a teaser for uh, the, the next session. You'll also see something uh, about this connection there in a talk by Kartik. Uh, we have connection to coding theory, and there are some connections to algorithms, and probably many more. 
Uh, but what we see in the third talk of this session is a new connection with distributed computing, where they take some techniques from fine grain complexity and use them to solve problems like all pairs of the path in the distributed setting. Well, and uh, the last talk, so uh, it will be about uh, some metric problem in relation to combinatorial problem of detecting four cycles. And the best analogy I could come up with uh, in the time that I had is, so there are problems that we really, really like, like uh, computing the edit distance between strings. And there are some combinatorial problems that we also like, like detecting triangles in graphs. And the best analogy that I could come up with for the fourth talk is that you can look at other uh, metrics. So for example, I think that we'll be looking at metrics on uh, trees, which, is, which are uh, motivated by questions in biology or from bioinformatics. And we'll look at very simple, again, combinatorial problems of detecting four cycles in a graph. And we'll see very intriguing connections between these two problems, actually in both ways. Yeah, so this is uh, the end of uh, the very general overview. So, uh, so let's uh, welcome Michal and.